In this video, we will show you how to install and program your new Genie belt or chain drive opener. Please be aware this video is only meant to be a visual aid to help you understand the installation of your opener. It is not meant to be a substitute for the owner's manual or installation poster that came with your new opener. Please refer to the owner's manual for complete detailed instructions and warning notices. It is extremely important that safety is maintained throughout the installation process. Also note that if you have an 8-foot high door, you will also need a rail extension kit, which is purchased separately. You should review the installation poster and manual for these specific points before proceeding with installation. This includes potential hazards, pre-installation considerations, all warning notices, recommended tools, parts list to ensure all parts are present. Once you have reviewed and understood each of these items, we are ready to begin installation. Step 1. Rail Assembly Whether you purchased a belt or chain drive opener, the rail assembly step shown here will work for either model. For this video, we will use a belt drive. While assembling the rail, make sure the arrows imprinted on all three main sections point toward the door. Slide the opener end rail section A to the correct position. Slide the door end rail section C to the correct position. Slightly lift the opener rail section A and slide rail connector J onto middle rail section B. Lower rail end section A and slide it into rail connector J until it locks. Lift the door end rail section C and slide rail connector J onto middle rail section B. Lower the door rail end section C and slide it into rail connector J until it locks. Slide the gear assembly to the front end of end rail section A. Turn the rail assembly over and place the drive gear assembly into the slots. Insert two screws to fasten the assembly to the rail, then flip the rail back over. Step 2. Adjusting the rail tension. First, we need to tighten the belt or chain inside the rail. Make sure the carriage and bullet are not engaged. To disengage the carriage, pull the red cord. Prior to tightening the belt or chain, check that the tension bracket is hooked into the rail as shown. Tighten the tension nut until the belt or chain is approximately 1 8 inch above the bottom edge of the midpoint of the rail. Step 3. Attaching rail to power head. Note that on certain models there is a foam cushion protector on the bottom to help prevent scuffing or protect the motion sensor from damage. Do not remove this cushion until installation is complete. You may also want to place a towel under the opener for added protection. Turn the rail so that the open side is facing toward the power head. Lower the drive gear over the spline shaft with the lights facing away from the door. For belt drive models, align the belt guide bracket tongue with the slot and align the holes in the opener. Fully tighten the screws, but do not over tighten. For chain drive models, utilize a second mounting bracket and align with the holes in the opener. Fasten the screws in the same manner as the belt drive. Step 4. Mounting header bracket onto the header. Now attach the header bracket to the header. First, determine the highest point of door travel. This step can be done by yourself, but it is easier if you have someone open a door while you measure. Place a ladder to the side of the door. Once the door is raised, note the highest point where it extends above the door track and measure from that point to the ceiling. If the ceiling is too high, measure from that point to the floor. The highest point of door travel for a sectional door is the highest point plus 2.5 inches while for a one-piece door, it is the highest point plus 6 inches. Center the header bracket above the door at the height that you measured. 
drill two pilot holes into the header board or into a 2x6 board that is connected to the wall studs. Secure bracket with lag screws provided. Review the warning notes carefully in the manual in regards to never attempting to move, adjust, or remove the door spring or springs. Make sure the header bracket is fastened to garage framing and not to drywall, particle board, plaster, or other materials. Step 5. Attaching Rail to Bracket For this step, have someone assist you. Elevate the opener assembly and position the door and rail section inside the bracket. Align holes in rail with holes in bracket. Slide a clevis pin through holes in rail and bracket and secure with push nut by pressing the push nut ends together. Gently lay the unit on top of the ladder or floor. It is recommended to place a towel under the unit to prevent scuffing. Insert the rubber plugs into the power head accessory holes if those holes are present on your operator. Step 6. Mounting power head to ceiling. Find and mark the ceiling mounting point at the center line of the door. Before attaching the mounting straps, refer to the assembly installation poster for differences between open beam ceiling and finished ceiling. Once this is determined, attach the mounting straps to the joist or cross piece with proper lag screws. While supporting the opener, have another person raise the door to make sure it clears the opener rail. Once the opener is in position, secure it to the mounting straps with provided fasteners. Note that the rail should be leveled to the floor. For tall garage ceilings, additional hanging angle and hardware may be required. Step 7. Attaching Door Bracket to Door This section assumes you have a typical steel sectional door. If you have a wood sectional door or a one-piece door, refer to the operation and maintenance manual. Warning! Doors made of masonite, lightweight wood, fiberglass, and sheet metal must be properly braced before mounting opener. Contact the door manufacturer or distributor with any questions. The Genie Company is not responsible for any damage caused due to an improperly braced door. Before getting started, you need to determine if you should use the door bracket provided by Genie or use the door bracket provided by your garage door manufacturer. Some garage door manufacturers provide door brackets, such as those shown, that should be used with your Genie door arm rather than or in conjunction with the one provided. Refer to your door manufacturer's manual in order to determine this. If you do use the door bracket provided by Genie, Follow these steps. Center the door bracket on the door slightly higher than the top set of rollers. Using the bracket, mark holes on door or frame and drill 1 8 inch holes. Secure the bracket with provided self-drilling screws. Step 8. Attaching the door arm to the door bracket and shuttle. Secure the emergency release handle to the cord. Using the emergency release cord, disengage the shuttle from the carriage and move the shuttle towards the door. Note that sectional doors typically accept the curved door arm provided. In some cases, a straight door arm may be used if the door bracket is mounted on the top edge of the door. With the door closed, the angle from the door arm to the header should be a maximum of 30 degrees. Match the holes between the straight and curved door arms, then fasten together with fasteners provided. Raise the curved door arm to the door bracket and attach with clevis and cotter pins. Step 9. Installing Safety Beams Position the safety beam source and receiver on each side of the garage door 5 to 6 inches above the floor. 
mark bracket mounting holes, and secure with lag screws provided into the wall or wood frame. Use garage pre-wiring when possible. If none is available, run the provided wire from the power head across the top of the rail and down to the source and sensor. Do this for both sides of the door. Secure wire to rail with wire clips spaced evenly along the rail. Then secure the rest of the wire to the header and wall with insulated staples. Insert wires from above through the control wire tube on the power head unit. Cut off excess wire. Attach wire to terminals on each safety beam. At the power head, twist two striped wires together and insert into terminal one by pressing in the orange tab with a small flat head screwdriver. Release the tab when wire is fully inserted. Then twist two white wires together and insert into terminal two in the same manner. Tape the excess wire to the power head away from the lights. Caution, if using insulated staples, do not make the staples too tight to the wire, as this can damage the wire and cause the safety beam system to malfunction. Step 10, installing the wall console. To find the right location for your wall console, make sure the spot you choose is within line of sight of the door. Once that is chosen, make sure the control is at least five feet above the floor to prevent small children from operating it. Route wire from power head to desired location for wall console. Note that some garages are already pre-wired for this step. If your garage is not pre-wired, secure wire with insulating staples and cut off excess wire. Remove the sticker on the back of the console to reveal the connecting terminals and attach wires. From above the unit, insert opposite end of wire through control wire tube on the power head and attach as shown. Mount the wall console with provided screws. Post entrapment warning label next to the wall console. Complete the connection and apply power. If the sensor or wall console LEDs come on, then the wire routing is correct. Unplug the unit once testing is complete. Warning! Use of any other wall control other than the one provided can cause unexpected operation of the door and loss of the lighting feature. Step 11. Install the light assembly. Install the light bulbs into the power head. Bulbs must be 100 watts or less, and compact CFL bulbs can be used. Insert the power head lens hinge into the slots in the motor cover on the power head. Swing the lens up into place. If necessary, squeeze the lens slightly to align tabs with slots at the top of the motor cover. Step 12. Connecting power. Plug in the power cord. Coil excess cord and tape or twist tie it to the top of the power head. Do not place cord above the light bulbs. Warning, never use an extension cord, remove the motor cover, or alter the plug in any way. Refer to installation instructions for more details. Step 13, ready to program. You are now ready to program your opener. Refer to the operation and maintenance manual for programming instructions. Caution! Do not run the opener until the travel limits have been set to avoid damage to the unit. In this video, we will show you how to set the travel limits for your opener. Please be aware this video is only meant to be a visual aid to help you understand the installation of your opener. It is not meant to be a substitute for the owner's manual that came with your new opener. Please refer to the owner's manual for complete detailed instructions and warning notices. Please note that a moving door can cause serious injury or death. Keep people clear of the door as it moves and do not allow children to play with a keypad, wall console, or remote controls. You should review the manual for other specific safety points before proceeding with installation. 
Also keep in mind these additional points when setting the travel limits. You have 30 seconds to execute each step. If you see two solid red or flashing LEDs on the opener, you have run out of time and must go back to the beginning of the step and start over. You can restart as many times as necessary. Do not operate this unit from the wall console before limits are set. Severe damage to the opener can occur. Keep in mind there are two triangular buttons for the down and up limits. The down arrow button is the one pointing toward the door, while the up arrow button is the one pointing away from the door. Step 1. Setting the down limit. First, lift the door open by hand until the shuttle engages the carriage on the rail. Press and hold the down arrow button for two seconds until the long LED comes on blue. Note that the round LED remains off. Release the down arrow button and the long LED will begin flashing. Press and hold the down arrow button until the garage door is fully closed on the floor, then release. Press and release the program set button. Both LEDs will flash blue and go off. The down or closed limit is now programmed. Step 2. Setting the up limit. It is recommended to have the door closed for this step. Press and hold the up arrow button for two seconds until the long LED light comes on blue. The round LED light remains off. Release the up arrow button and the round LED will begin flashing blue. Press and hold the up arrow button until the door is fully open, then release. Watch the carriage as it approaches to avoid having it damage or contact the power head. Press and release the square program set button. Both LEDs flash blue and then go off. The up or open limit is now programmed. This completes the travel limit programming. Step 3. Setting the force control. Simply open and close your garage door, pressing the wall console open-close button. The force control is now set.